Greetings gentlemen, in this video we are going to look at different situations and we want to see what the reasons for rotations are. We're going to look over many replays and see precisely what kind of decisions are made and why they are made. I'm excited to do this kind of exercise with you. Let's get started. So those are the following reasons to rotate. You have two basic categories that you can go for. You have the active and the reactive category. The best rotations that you can make are the active ones where you choose on your own terms where you want to rotate. Those things include your own power spike. This could be a level 6. This could be a ulti ready. That could be an item that you got. You just got your urn or you got your vessel. Anything like that where you feel like right now I'm relatively stronger than the enemy and if I have the same shit for a period of time, it's getting weaker and weaker, so I want to use it as soon as possible. It could be a weak enemy. You see that the enemy troll is level 5 instead of level 6, so there's an opportunity to kill. You see that he doesn't have any survivable items. You see it's a troll ranger that can die easily as soon as you just step under the tower. Another thing that needs to be done and this is more of a, let's say, condition for rotating active, is that your lane is fixed. You need to have a fixed lane. This means there shouldn't be a enemy catapult knocking at your tier 1 tower right now on the mid lane, so that you guarantee to lose your tower if you rotate. Having that is the worst situation that you can get into. If you rotate, there's always a risk of not succeeding. And if it's too costly and it's too guaranteed that you're going to get punished for your rotation, you don't want to engage in the rotation at all. Having a offlaner power spike can be another cue for you to go. If you have a legion commander as the offlaner and legion commander just reached level 6 and you know you can get a kill if you just join with one ability extra, then you move towards it. If you have a primal beast level 6, even a centaur, anything that has some sort of initiation potential and has the ability to really get something done and wants to get rid of the cooldown on the offlane, then that's another nice cue and nice trigger for you to move towards your offlaner and to play active. Other reasons could be reactive. For example, you see that on your own safe lane, the enemy offlaner starts diving and they have the opportunity to dive, but they are falling low, of course, since they are taking tower damage. And even though they might just get the kill, if you show up, you can prevent your safe laner from dying and you can punish the offlaner by playing active. You can also counter rotate if the enemy mid laner is showing up on a lane. This is necessary many times, even though it's not the best situation. If the only reason for your rotation is a counter rotate, you need to assess very quickly in your mind if you're actually able to take out their aggression and to soften their enemy strike, or if you're just feeding away and if you're not ready and you don't have your power spikes and your abilities, those kind of rotation can be very punishing. In many cases this becomes extra difficult because the enemy mid laner has a queue to be there. Maybe a low HP carry, a spell that has been used, a strong off laner, a power rune. So they move towards this direction because they realize a strength. And you need to assess very very precisely if your strength actually counters that or if you're just feeding into the aggression. Also, if you're reacting, you're probably TPing there, and if you TP there, then the enemy mid laner that initiated the gank can just TP out back to the mid lane, pressure your tower and punish you in return. Another reactive thing is if the enemy is just grossly out of position. If you see them pushing a tower alone, if you realize they're cutting the wave on the off laner even though they're too weak to do it, then of course you can seize the opportunity and go for another gank as well. So in this video, we are going to see a different place where Queen of Pain players choose to rotate and we want to see what procs their decision and how the rotations go. In this first replay we have a lead. We already took the tower away of the enemies and we have some liberty to do movement on the map. So we have an advantage here already and now we're seeing that there are pings on the top side and now we see on the mini map that somebody's seeping in, we see a slug and we see a IO. All of those things are a proc that there is some action going to be happening here. Mid lane is under pressure already. You can see a whole catapult wave moving towards this tower. So that's amazing. And now we want to be active in the play. We have the ulti ready and we are reacting to this. 
we can think about walking there we can even tp here but if we walk here we have a super nice angle we used another blink and now we have a super super nice opportunity here to save our carry and we have an off lane even to back up the aggression so we throw them back into the wall we use some abilities and we try to clean up whatever we can preferably we get the slark here we didn't see before if the slark still had the bounce or not so that's why he made a aggressive move towards this area and then they get a slark kill Funny thing, once you do something good in the game, there's a butterfly effect and then luckily you find another stack so you take away even more value from the enemy and those kind of rotations, they can really really snowball in a quick win. By the way, all of the videos I'm showing here that have the good rotations in them result in a very very early win, so there must be some correlation with this here anyways, right? <laughs> this rotation is going to be a little bit different. As we see, we are in a game here where we are 1-2-2 and we are starting to lose our mid lane tower. And the situation looks pretty, pretty bad for us. We don't want to be engaging in this fight here. Even though we have our ulti up, we don't really want to run into Lion and the Gyrocopter and the Puck was sitting here around as well. We see that the top side is pushing in and bottom side there is a Sven who just used ulti. So he's probably looking to boost his net worth and farming the areas. Basically, we don't want to be at the Sven side, but we also don't really want to be mid lane. So what can we do, really? We see top lane pushed in, and now we have information. We see that Puck TP'd top, and we see that there's a primal top with ulti. You can always remind you, um, check with a single look if your teammates have ulti or not. So Puck is TPing top. We have a primal that's ready, and we have a quap that decides to go for a engagement here. Primal starts initiation and Quop follows up. They look where Puck is trying to play, then they use the ulti and they catch the Puck. And this kind of, how do you say it? Well, passively aggressive reaction, since you, you're giving up a mid lane tower, but you're taking something in exchange for it, you immediately punish um, the enemies if their structure breaks up. This is something we can add to our toolbox and we can just see if enemies mess up, if they make bad decisions or if they're playing alone and then we can use this as well. There even seems to be more opportunity. Suddenly we get a kill picked up and Primal uses his ult and the line rotates and then we have a couple teammates here that are still looking for a play. And then we get a lion kill out of this. And now even Sven rotates. And we get a brewmaster kill out of this. So from this single decision to give up the mid lane tower. And then to rotate to other areas of the map. All of those things just snowball out of it. And it was an incredible good investment. Even to die here. Because our team benefits heavily out of this. In this first clip we are watching a queen of pain player. And we are zooming a little bit through the laning stage so we can get a feel about the game. So he's trading with the Ember, playing back and forth, just normal laning stuff happening. And then we want to look and see the cues that he's taking to get his first rotation in. So the things of course that are coming up now, since we're low HP, we definitely want to look for the rune. Uh, you always want to look for the rune, especially if you have a mobile hero. Sadly the rune is spawning bottom, so a cop cannot take it. And then the question is, okay, what do you want to do now? We kind of have to refill our mana and HP. So he's trading back and then he's getting into the base. And now he has time to look at the map. Let's see what he sees. So he's zooming around and he's seeing top lane and then he's looking for bottom and then he's looking for mid. So top lane, I want to see those exact movements again because I think they showed perfectly what we want to look at. He's looking at top, sees two low HP heroes that he can kill with his ulti and a blink initiation. He looks around bottom, he sees that they are diving already the Venge and Anti-Mage is low HP and Dark Willow just used the spell, so you don't want to go into this. And then he's looking at mid lane and he sees, well, there's a creep F coming up, but Ember is full HP, so the best thing that I could do is just to protect the wave from getting it into the tower. And then he decides to make a play. He's like, I want to use the ulti, I'm going top. This is the kind of decision making that you want to do. Once you have the opportunity to go for it, you can do it, but you don't want to feel forced. So let's see how this rotation plays out. He's looking to get the Slark. Doesn't get the Slark. Changes towards the Phoenix. 
Now Ember TPs in and we have a perfect scenario again where you are going to see that the guy who reacts to the play usually loses. So Ember is stepping in, Ember has to move out again, Slark is completely out of position, Slark dies even though the ulti was uh, missed on him, but it gets onto the bench and suddenly we have a Phoenix killed, a Ember TP forced, a <laughs> Slark dead and a Venge dead out of one TP. And if you compare this value to the couple of creeps that you have would have gotten on the mid lane, of course you see the benefit of a nice rotation. And then we strafe back towards the mid lane. And then we have a gameplay from a different player. He was checking bottom here already. He's checking bottom again. He has his ulti up, so he looking, he's looking for an engagement. He checks bottom again. Looking for the troll. Looking for the troll again. Just straving with his camera. Checking his items even. And now he sees the spell is used. And yeah, there's the initiation. He doesn't even ulti straight up ahead. It's a good timing to go on the troll when he's level 5. He gets the kill and he's out of here again. Straving back towards the mid lane. Since he still has the ulti, he's pushing out the wave and he's looking to make another aggressive play. It also times really well with the minute 9 rune, so he's here on this top area anyways. And then he realizes, okay, I have a CK and we're playing against the Shaker. CK has a stun and I have an ulti, this might be enough. He's walking towards the top area and has a perfect situation with a really, really nice setup. Now his uh, teammates TP in as well and he's looking to get a kill on the Earthshaker. The kill happens. Enemies rotate in and he just blinks out and barely gets out of their life. But again, we forced a punch. There's a ton of space now for the Night Stalker. We got two kills out of this move. The CK got a ton of XP and we used our ulti efficiently. Since we have blink, we can always reconnect to the lanes easily anyways. And another one, engagement. In this clip, Wing just got a region rune. So we're able to use a couple of spells here, play really aggressively, we can push out the wave. And then we are at the minute 8 timing again, so we're looking for something to do. And we saw him already strafe with his camera towards the bottom area. And what we can see now is that Clock used a spell and the enemy Ursa also seems to be in deep and they're all primed to use some abilities. We also see that our Legion commander still has a uh, duel up here. So we have an opportunity to play. He uses the region, he TPs bottom. And gets a really, really nice ulti off. Which leads to a dual kill. In the next game we're playing against Lina as a pop. And we have pretty much the same scenario again. Lina used a ton of spells, Lina used the ulti and we're rotating back towards the base. And now again, he has time to analyze the situation and look at the map. He sees the Lina, checks items real quick and sees the tower and then realizes that um, this Legion commander is diving in really deep. And the situation that we're having here is that Venom is closing in on the Legion and our TA. And that means we have an opportunity to rotate here. So he TPs bottom. Jumps into it. Even tries to save his ulti a little bit. And has an engagement. They kill the LC. You can think about getting more or you can just straight back towards the mid lane again. Alright guys, I hope you liked it. I hope it was educational and entertaining. Leave me a like and a subscription if you want. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next one. Have an amazing day.